All right, let's talk about lipids. And to begin with, some of you guys have requested that my husband teach you. I really don't know why, because he doesn't know biology, really. But he's going to teach you a little bit about lipids. Lipids are mostly made from carbon and hydrogen atoms and are generally not soluble in water. But remember, never forget about ribosomes. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you have it. Well, ribosomes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> Lipids are mostly made from carbon and hydrogen, and they are genu genu generally not soluble in water, meaning solubility is basically if something can be broken down, can we mix it together, can we, can we create a solution from it? So, lipids cannot. Typically, um, lipids have more carbon and hydrogen atoms, and we don't see as many oxygen atoms as we compare it to other biomolecules. Um, examples of lipids are fats, oils, and waxes. So if you remember from the Willie the Water uh, Strider lab, there was the water and oil station, and basically those never mix together. So an oil is a lipid because a lipid is not soluble in water. Building blocks of lipids are glycerol and fatty acids. So if you see in the picture, we have this portion of the lipid right there is the glycerol, while the rest of this is fatty acids. And um, glycerol is considered an alcohol, but not like a rubbing alcohol. It's not, it's not that type of an alcohol. Um, and then we have all this right here, which is called the fatty acid. We have two types of fatty acids. We have saturated and unsaturated. For the first one, saturated uh, fatty acid is where we only have single bonds between every single carbon atom. And if you take a look at this picture, right, we can see we've got single bonds happening here. And then all throughout the fatty acid itself, right, we have something represented like a zigzag. And the zigzag basically represents that there's a carbon that exists at every single point in the zigzag. It's just easier to draw this instead of what you saw in the previous slide with lots of carbons, lots of hydrogens. And we also know that there's going to be hydrogens attached, but like I said, it's easier to draw it in this manner. So there's basically no empty spaces for hydrogen atoms to bond to carbon. And we see saturated fats um, in animal-based products such as meat, butter, lard, and shortening. And an easy, um, uh, one thing you want to remember about saturated fats is that they are a solid at room temperature. So like the stick of butter right here, solid at room temperature, that stick of butter could sit on your counter and it wouldn't melt. And that's typically bad for you, so saturated fats are bad for you because in your body we're you know we're not dealing with 80 or 90 degrees inside your body we're dealing with something that's around the room temperature and so what's happening inside of your blood is that you've got this fat saturated fats that could potentially clog your arteries and veins and basically cause um, a heart attack so it's not good to eat lots of butter um, and then trans fats um, they're, they're, a, they're a form of a saturated fat, and the way that looks is not too, we don't want to be too concerned with that at this level um, in science, but those are bad for you as well. An unsaturated fatty acid is one, is a fatty acid that's attached to uh, glycerol that has at least one double carbon um, bond. So, we're talking about this bond here. That double line that you see, it looks like this. Right? We've got all the carbons on these ends. There's a carbon here, a carbon here, but there is a double bond between those two carbons. And that causes it to kink. 
in the fatty acid. So a unsaturated fatty acid that is poly unsaturated is if the fatty acid has more than one double bond between the carbon. So if we saw more bonds um, occurring, something like this, more double bonds in that fatty acid tail, then this would be a poly unsaturated fatty acid. We see unsaturated fatty acids in plant-based products, nuts, um, avocado, olive oil, and these are considered good for you and they are a liquid at room temperature. So inside the body at room temperature, um, or slightly above room temperature, they are liquid. So they're not going to clog your arteries and cause a heart attack. Fats are the most concentrated energy source within our diet. And so they basically give off two and a half times the energy compared to carbohydrates, compared to sugars. Um, so a, it's, a, it's a great source of energy, lots of concentrated energy, and they have more chemical bonds, and so essentially they can give off more energy. Because remember, when you break a chemical bond, you're going to make energy. And a lot of times this energy is stored because we use carbohydrates as our first um, first line of defense, our first source for energy. And so uh, if we take in lots of fats, those are going to get stored. So it's not necessarily um, a benefit if you eat more fat because your body, no matter what, is always going to use up carbohydrates as its energy before it will tap into the reserve of fat energy. And we see fats used um, by animals for insulation. So if you think of whales, they have um, what we call blubber. So it's a very, very thick layer of fat, and that can give them, provide insulation. So whales can go deep into the ocean, and they won't um, get co cold uh, very quickly. And it can protect organs. We have natural layers of fat um, around the heart, around other organs that protect um, the organs. Um, it can provide for so shock absorption as animals move. If you think about your gluteus maximus, it is made of lots of lipids. And so when you sit down, you have some protection. We have um, waxes that are also a lipid, and these are a protective covering. So you may see on the surface of a plant that it's kind of shiny and waxy. And if you put water on it, it would bubble up just like wax paper. And there's that protective covering there. We have earwax in our ears, and it cleans and protects the ear canal. We have the wax on the plants that I just mentioned. And whales do build up a lot of layers of earwax for more protection. And you can kind of tell the age of a whale after it dies. It's, it, um, they have capability in, in a way to test and see the layers of wax and um, have a good range for their age. And lastly, um, there is a very important type of lipid inside of the, the cells, and it's called a phospholipid. And when we get to cells, we'll discuss this in detail. But around a cell, the layer that's around a cell is actually made up of this structure here. It's a phospholipid. It's called a phospholipid. The phospho phos portion, this should be phospho, comes from the phosphate group that's right here. And then there is a lipid layer right here, right? It's the glycerol and the fatty acid portion. And that actually is going to make up the cell membrane. All right, that's it.